public sports announcement, man. There's been a lot of speculation about who going to come out with the crown of the SEC this year. Now, this going to be a very interesting year. I hope a lot of the players ain't been too locked in on this video game. hope they still been in the gym, getting ready, getting prepared. hope they still getting mentally prepared. I uh, hope they ain't too stuck up in uh, college football 25. Because uh, it's going to get real, real shicey this, this this fall. Now, this SEC, in my book, it's it's up for grabs with, with about four or five different teams. And uh, that's what make it more interesting this year. I'm glad Texas... And uh, Oklahoma finally then went on join. I mean, y'all y'all are in the South, so it's only right. About time. But uh, this make the SEC way more way more interesting. So uh, let's get down to it, man. I'm just saying, right right now, uh, according to ESPN, according to uh, after a media day and all that, people really got Texas favored as a win in the SEC. Even Nick Saban say it's gonna be hard for teams to get past Texas. They looking like the strongest team, but uh, you know, based on really what's going on as far as this transfer report and all that, it, it, it look a little shaky to me because Texas is the only team. Well, Texas got six starters that are transfers, so uh, it's gonna be it's it's they gonna have some gelling to do. Ole Miss got the most with eleven, and uh, six on defense. But like I said, uh, to to me, it's looking like Georgia gonna be the most complicated team to get past. They're going to be the team to beat this year. It's going to be the Georgia Bulldogs. They got two uh, transfers that starting on offense or defense on both sides, only two. So that means everybody starting on offense or defense has been there. They've been locked in with the program. They seasoned. They ready. And uh, Georgia had one slip up last season. And y'all seen what they did to Florida State. So, I mean, they're going to really come out and, and, and prove to everybody why they should have been in the playoff last year, defending their championship, which they should have been. And uh, they're going to come out with a point to prove this year. So for Texas, you're really going to have to have a big year from from Quinn, from the quarterback Quinn Euros. You're going to have, you're gonna have to have a monster year. And like I said, it's, it's really going to have to come down to him and this, this front line. He got a season defensive line. Uh, they just got a transfer in, Big Bill Norton, big 6'6", 335. They just got him in on the defensive side. So they, they – they pretty stout on the defensive end, but the only thing I'm shaky about on their defensive side is these transfer uh, uh, cornerbacks coming in. And uh, like I said, uh, we got uh, Andrew Makube, I believe you say that, from uh, Clemson coming in. Uh, they still got Maurice Blackwell, Gavin Holmes. They got guys like that, but like I said, it's really gonna be it's really gonna be up to them how this defense form and uh, how they gel together and how they what they really bring to the table this season. And that's gonna be their season. Now, like I said, if if the offensive side, if um, if uh, Isaiah Bond, you know, the guy from Alabama, if he can show up, him and Matt Golden, Matt Golden come from Houston, like I said, and we gotta wait and see if Isaiah Bond gonna have a better season at at Texas than he had at Alabama. That's the question. That's what we're waiting to see. That's any team in the SEC really, but as far as just the caliber of players they got, it's gonna be up to some of them to step up because they haven't had no big years. None of them players really have. Had big years yet, and I think um, if though if them DBs and a couple of those linebackers can have some good years, and Isaiah Bond and and Quinn Ewers can kind of if they can if they can gel together pretty good, I think Texas will be all right. But far as getting past Georgia, I don't know. I don't know that. Like I said, we ain't, we ain't really worried about Alabama. Like I said, Alabama is not really on the radar right now as of now because of all the changing. I think that's all it is because, um, like I said, they had a lot of players transfer out, a lot of players transfer in. So, still got Jalen Milro, still got the quarterback. I mean, you still, you still got uh, Justice Haynes. You still, I mean, you still got these guys, like I said. So, uh, but the big story, the big, the, the big, the, the guy that I'm looking to step up and really do something is uh, Jeremy ben, Jeremy Bernard. Uh, they got they got him punt return, kick return, hit wide right receiver. He come from Washington and played in Michigan State too. Like I said, he 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 one of them guys that's really got to have a good year. He pretty much got to take Isaiah Bond's spot and fill in for that for that void and be that guy for Jalen Milro. Him and uh, like I said, they got a freshman Caleb Oden, Oden uh six five two fifteen. Like I said, they got some guys down there. So it's 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 gonna take for Jeremy to step up, their offense step up and really put in the point because Alabama gonna play well defensively. I'm sure. I you know. 
you got some, who they got, uh, Keon Sa- Sab and uh, who else? That? I can't think of some of them other names, but uh, they said they're going to be all right. But I, I understand what Saban's saying. Then plus he's not coaching them. You know, that's that's his position. So he probably feels some type of way. You know, they ain't going to coach them right. They ain't going to have them prepared. So we just got to wait and see. Alabama one of them teams, we just got to wait and watch and see. But right now, as, like I said, in my book, it's looking like Georgia. And the reason I say that is because, like I said, Georgia only got two players on both sides that are transfer starters. Uh, they, they they front line is stacked. They DB stacked. Uh, Dalen Everett, uh, Malachi Starks, uh, Ja'Cory Thomas. I mean, they stacked uh, over there. Uh, then uh, on top of all that, they get uh, Trevor Etienne, their running back, the running back from Florida. So uh, I mean, it, it, it's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a year that's it's all laid out for Georgia for them. It's it's theirs for the taking, but it's gonna be up to them to be mentally ready and like I said, not make a lot of mistakes. They had to cut cut back on a lot of mistakes this year. That's really that's really the only thing that's gonna hold them back. They they stack. They got the depth. They got everything. They got the number one safety, the number one defensive back, the number one linebacker. There, they got. I mean, they recruiting class number one, so it, it, it's really up to them. I mean, uh, but but one of the guys that I really want to see step up at Georgia at the cornerback, one of their cornerbacks, C.J. Allen. If he if he can have a big year, if he can step up and be a key piece of that defense, you know, Georgia gonna be kind of unstoppable. Man, they just need. It's, it's, sometimes that's all it takes is one or two guys really just step up in certain positions. And just really make plays, make plays when they time when that time come, make the play. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what be the difference in these great teams and good teams. You know what I'm saying? So and I think Georgia got an opportunity to be a great team this year, go undefeated, well, uh, win the championship, win it all. It's gonna be tough this year, but you know, as far as the SEC championship though, the SEC crown, you know, I got Georgia taking it this year. Nah, uh, to all my old Miss fans out there. Ole Miss just a little shaky because y'all got 11 starters that are transfers. You got a lot of these guys coming in. I don't know if they're going to start or not. They got them listed as starters, but you got a lot of guys that are just coming in trying to figure each other out, trying to get this chemistry down. Chemistry is a big thing in this college football thing. College football crazy. Yeah, atmosphere, uh, the, the, the smack talking. I mean, just college football is just different. It's on different, a whole different level, and especially in this SEC. So chemistry is a big thing, man. You're playing against the best of the best in the SEC. So you really got to be on, on, on your team, on your, on, your on, on point when you get on that on that football field. And for them to have so many players just coming in, I don't, I just don't see them kind of getting it together this year. And um, but they are a product of the transfer portal. So we're gonna be able to see if if it really works or you know it really don't. You know, should you stay at a program two or three years and develop, or should you bounce around and find you know, who going to play you. You know, it's like that's what the transfer portal about. You know, the NIL deal always deal. But at the end of the day, man, you you going from program to program trying to find the best developer or find the best situation, you know, it it might not be the case all the time. So Ole Miss is a product of one of them. We just got to sit back and watch, see what happens with that school. They just like Alabama this year. It's up for grabs with it just, just you know, it, the, the, the table is set for them. They got a, they got a nice schedule. So it's really up to them. It's up to Ole Miss this year. Like I said, I want to, I want to see a big year from a couple guys down there, especially um, uh, old uh, uh, Jackson, old Dart, Jackson Dart, the quarterback. You know, see what he get, say how he get down. Uh, they got a linebacker that transferred in, Chris Paul Jr. I'm trying to see how he get down. Um, uh, let me see. Trey Mason with Trey no Trey Amos went down there from Alabama. Trying to see how he get down. Like I said, there's a lot of players that transferred in there. They got they gotta have big years this year and really do their thing. But they say they got one of the top receiving cores uh in the in the SEC, so we're gonna see. I ain't really looked into none of the they receivers really. I, I I'm ready to see what they're gonna do this season on on the field. Then we'll start noticing them. But uh anyway, we're gonna um Talk about Auburn for a little bit, but you know, they're my boys. I gotta throw them in there. Auburn looking good everywhere except the quarterback position. Now I don't know what it is about 
uh, Coach Freeze and Peyton Thorne. I don't know what type of relationship they got going on or if they, you know, they parents, some friend, booster club, whatever it is. But this man got so much hope in this man for, for nothing. I, I haven't seen nothing spectacular about Peyton. I haven't seen nothing spectacular about him at all. In the spring game, he actually looked very mediocre. He looked like he looked in the season. And when um the freshman got in there, I forget his name, the freshman quarterback that just got there, when he played in the he looked better. So I think that through this season, he might end up taking the starting position. He might end up trying to couple, couple more guys, especially these first couple games don't go well. And I think that uh, uh, quarterback change is needed because I, I I truly believe that Auburn would be ranked higher, especially in recruiting. But they would be looked at as a threat in the SEC if they made a quarterback change this offseason, if he had got somebody to transfer portal. I really, really, really think he missed out on Cam, Cam Ward from uh, Washington State. He could have got him down here because he ended up going to Miami. And now Miami is is a good, you know, expected to have a good season because, you know, it's about who you got right there at that quarterback position. You know, it's about every position, of course, but, you know, that quarterback position is unique. You got to have a smart guy. You got to have a dual threat guy in this day and age. You got to have somebody that's really going to get out there and get down to the nitty gritty. And, you know, Peyton Thorne just ain't that, man. He's a, he's a good quarterback, you know, good average, but he's not a dog. You – Everybody, every Arbor fan, you know we need a dual threat quarterback. You got to have a dog down there. That's the only time we really have successful seasons is when we just got that guy that's gonna really uh, put it on the put it on the floor, put it on the ground, run, put that put that cleats down and and, and get really really get down just as if he a running back. You got to have a dual threat quarterback and also can throw the ball deep, accurately, consistently. Peyton Thorne has never did that. The couple years he's been there, I, I haven't seen. We've, we've had mediocre seasons. We have little sparks where it look good and, oh, shit, we might have something. But then he'd be like, nah, like, what the hell? So I'm I'm really looking forward to a quarterback change. I, through, don't be surprised if it's one, three, four games in the season and you see the freshman step up. I don't wish none. I don't wish no injury or nothing. I just wish a – uh, a fair and square f- f- battle for position, and, and and you put the best man in the position that they need to be. May the best man win. And I think that that freshman quarterback he just got is better than Peyton Thorne. Like I said, he missed out on a couple quarterbacks in the transfer portal. Tennessee got a good one. Uh, like I said, uh, Oregon, you know, team, these teams out here, they snatching these quarterbacks up. He freeze stuck. He ain't do nothing. And I think that's the only thing that's keeping – him out of the conversation for who's going to be the best in the SEC. But right now, like I said, the world pretty much at ESPN, everybody talking about Texas. Yeah, Texas. Texas is going to Texas, Texas, Texas. But, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm here to say, by the end of the season, yeah, mark my words, I think Georgia's going to take this SEC championship this season and damn near take the, 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 the national championship. They have a well-seasoned stacked team. Uh, uh, chemistry is already built. Great coach. They they doing their thing, but at the same time, they they probably gonna have the hardest schedule considered. You know, in in the in the in the nation, pretty much everybody in the SEC. Damn near every team in the SEC gonna be ranked probably at, at some point this season. Not not every team, but damn near. I'm gonna let me see. I'm gonna say Georgia, Florida, Auburn, Alabama, LSU, Oklahoma, Texas. Tennessee, Ole Miss, Missouri, going to all be ranked at some t- some point this season, top 25. You know, I I wouldn't count Texas A&M because if they quarterback have a good season, they're going to be all right too. But Vandy, uh, they got work to do. Mississippi State, Kentucky got work to do. South Carolina got work to do. You know, they got some they got some weapons over there too, but, you know, they, they I got some work to do. They got some showing out to do, and it's tough in this in this conference now. But as far as the teams I just know, like I said, Georgia, Florida, uh, LSU, Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas, yeah, they, Ole Miss, Tennessee, they they mess around, Missouri, they mess around to see the top twenty five. And like I said, now all you gotta do is get in that top twelve now, get in that top twelve, get in the playoff. Can y'all can y'all imagine 16, six SEC teams? In the playoffs, six or seven 
I I wouldn't be surprised. But we need some we need some some good seasons from these transfers coming in, and 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 also from these guys that are stepping up into these positions that uh they filling in for these from these NFL guys that are left. Cause it's some big, it's always big shoes to fill in the SEC, baby. Always. So shout out to all the freshmen, man. Y'all keep working. Get off that game, man. Work, man. Hit the gym, man. Go lift some weights or something, man. Run some heels or something. Because the season right around the corner, man. It's on the popping. Who going to take the SEC crown, man? I got Georgia, man. Who you got? 